Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Oh, it's nearly tripped over the rug. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Scottish Highlands and welcome to a more positive video this week. At the end of last week's vlog, it went terribly wrong. Storm Ashley came along, took me out and took off the passenger door of the van. Not right off, but smashed it. And that's in a pretty bad way. We can't even open the door. But anyway, all of that is behind us. We're feeling more positive and we've got a little bit of good news. Can you believe it? We've got a plan. <laughs> we never have plans, <laughs> but it's a good plan. It's a good plan. We're heading to Edinburgh. We'll talk about it when we get there. But where are we now? Well, we've come to Loch Or, which is one of the pretty prettiest locks I think we've driven round. It's got the famous Kilkern Castle on the southern end which sort of sits on a little island or a little bit of land sticking out and then in the background you've got lovely mountains all around. All along the shores of the loch there's pine forest with the lovely autumn colours going right down to the water and then you've got all these beautiful buildings like we went to St Conan's Kirk, an eclectic church created by a man and his architect and mix of eclectic styles and it's just stunning stunning buildings sat on the shores and then we're just parked where we are now by this really lovely hotel and the building is amazing isn't it we're literally just down a little side road you don't hear the traffic at all and no one knows we're down here yeah. and then this like five four five star hotel just at the top there the mm. castle that we went to last night that nick was just telling you about the kill Kilkern Castle. Kilkern Castle. I mean, that's pretty amazing. You can pull down the road there and just have a little walk like through a farmer's field to kind of get close to it. Pretty impressive. Yeah, very nice luck. And um, there is a little train, like an abandoned train or something down yeah. there. So we've definitely got our mojos back now after what happened last week. To be honest with you, after the incident, we were actually ready to leave Scotland. We were like fed up. We were fed up with the rain, the wind. Do you want to go down, Diz? Before you continue, darling, can we just appreciate those socks? <laughs> well, they'll probably look better with my white trainers. <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't take us too long to just be loving Scotland again. It's just such an amazing, epic country. Look at that. What a pretty little platform. Must be some beautiful train rides around Scotland, eh? Oh, we did find out, you know, the Glen Glenfinnan Railway to take that train from Fort William up to Malague is £65 return. It's a hell of a journey and I think it's actually on a lot of people's bucket list because yeah. it's that awesome. Loving those socks. I came here last night and it was getting dark, came here with Dizzy. Run back screaming. I ran back, I got really freaked out, I don't know why. It's been left like this, it's, it's like the bed's not even been made and things like that and there's like an empty can of pop on the side and there's tea towels and things. Don't ask me why, it just looks like it's haunted. And it's all like kind of retro and old in there and it's just been abandoned. I mean, look at the views. You've got views over to the castle. You've got views of this beautiful loch and it's just sat there wasting away kind of thing. I don't know if, whether it belongs to the hotel. There's a sign on the gate saying it's like self-catering accommodation, but I don't think it's in use anymore. Come on, Charlie. So it says this 1954 railway carriage has been converted to comfortable self-catering accommodation. I think it must have been converted in 1954 and just left.
just pulled off the side of the road on our way to Loch Lomond to come and see the Falls of Faloch. Falls of Faloch. I think it's a quick walk through here. We're hoping it's a quick walk through here. And we're not taking the doggies because it is muddy. Can't stop filming you walking with those socks. Well, I think the boots actually look better than the uh, green Trek trainers. So I've improved slightly since this morning. Oh, look at this. There's a cage for your safety. It's like something out of Jurassic Park Lost World, isn't it? If you looked at this on Google Maps, you see images of people jumping from the little platform down there in the summer. You swam in Loch Ness. I think you could do it. I mean, how nice would it be in the summer jumping up, jumping from that little ledge there and just swimming round there? It's amazing, isn't it? Impressive. Definitely worth a little hike. That is the plus, so when it does rain all the time, everything's really green and the waterfalls always have loads of water and loads of force. Now, I just said to Nick, we won't remember this waterfall. We won't, probably, will we? I mean, it's quite nice, but we probably won't remember it, unless... Unless, on the way back through that big muddy patch, I push you in. No. Oh. Unless you get down to your pants and jump in, then you remember it for the rest of your life. Or Sarah puts on that Wonder Woman swimming costume she's got. She and wore in the I lot. remember it for the rest of my life. See, this is why we didn't want to bring the dogs. It's not worth it, is it? Imagine how muddy they'd get and then you've got to spend like an hour cleaning them before you can take them back in the van. It's got to that time of year, isn't it, where as soon as you leave the van you get real mucky. I don't know, in Scotland I think that time of year is kind of year round because of all the rain they get. We have arrived at Loch Lomond and we've just been driving down the shores of it for about half an hour and we've covered a tiny bit of distance about a third of the way down it is the biggest loch in Scotland and as usual the drive is absolutely stunning it's just a windy road following the shore beautiful colors on the trees incredible we found ourselves a fantastic little park up I think there's a few of these along the shore and you're allowed to park here you have to get a permit in the summer months but you can camp here there's a toilet block over there with hot water and there's lots of spots for tents there's a couple of beaches down there picnic benches and all that and so we can park here and just relax i just went to take the drone up and i could smell something delicious i thought is there is there a food van here somewhere is there a food van <laughs> realized it was coming from this one trying to get extras aren't you with your compliments, compliments. <laughs> <laughs> smells delicious hopefully going to be a risotto with mushrooms and chestnuts we're getting there comfortable boys you comfortable i like your arrangement with the sofa went a bit crazy today didn't we looks very very comfortable but less room still can get up on that high bit but it's this is good for the doggies because they like to go on different platforms you see there we go my love these are the packet chestnuts, which are obviously a lot easier than picking your own and then having to shell them and everything. Chestnut mushrooms, a little bit of um, spring greens in there for a bit of greenery. Obviously risotto rice. Where's all the juice come from? Vegetable stock, like a vegetable stock paste it is actually. So it's mm. quite nice that you just add water in that. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. Olive oil, a bit of um, soy sauce some a bit of different spices and herbs to, to taste a bit of nutritional yeast so i did go for my little walk and then i was walking back here as i said and i smelt something you know you get food envy and you smell something you know, oh that's, that smells nice where's that coming from it was probably the <laughs> onions you know when you cook onions at yeah. the start put onions in the pan let them cook and then started doing the mushrooms that smells quite strong and i had the windows open a little bit of that good stuff on top. Oh, I know what else you need. You need a bit of black pepper, darling. Do you know what? There is a little crime, though. We only had one garlic. What? One garlic clove oh, in this meal. That was, that was the only one we had. 
So at least it's one though, so there is a little bit of garlic. So you might be able to taste other things <laughs> other than garlic in this meal for a change. Oh, look at that. Dizzy's actually being very considerate and sitting right on the end of the sofa there. So, so you've got a good view of people to bark at. Usually they're stretched out. Look at this. There's like four sections to this sofa, isn't there? You've got the throne, the best section. Now I've got this tiny narrow section. No, you haven't. No, I haven't. I'm standing up as usual. That was a lovely meal, darling. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my love. Now, while we're on the subject of food, I just want to take a moment to talk about spam. Spam and corned beef. Now, I don't want to talk about tin meat. I want to talk about the spam that we all hate, those spam emails, text messages, phone calls that we're all getting a lot more of. We were getting a lot of emails until recently, until we started using Incogni. So you're probably wondering how spammers get hold of our details. Details, well, the most likelihood is they've bought them. There's actually a huge marketplace out there where our information and data is bought and sold. There's hundreds of lists with all our information, address, email address, phone number, education, siblings, which are held by data brokers and are sold to spammers who then contact us. The good news is we can be removed off these lists. The bad news is that we wouldn't have a clue where to start and it would take hours and hours to do so and a lot of hassle. But Incogni, offer a service where they actively seek out these lists and request for us to be removed and you can check on their platform to see how many requests have been put out there how many have been completed and how many are still active now in the past there have been lots of data breaches which you've probably heard about where people have had their social security number amongst other information stolen but then people using a service like incogni have been free from those breaches and their privacy has been kept safe so we have an annual subscription for incogni which is great because they're constantly monitoring these lists and this has massively reduced the number of spam emails we're getting through. If you're interested in signing up for Incogni, they're offering a fantastic 60% discount on an annual subscription and there's a 30 day money back guarantee so you've got nothing to lose. Click the link in our description for more information. So that's the spam sorted. Now what we're going to do about the corned beef? So this is our last loch it in is. Scotland. It's sad. For this trip for this trip. Mm, we are 100% coming back to Scotland, by the way, just saying, because obviously we haven't seen hardly any of, well, we've seen a bit, we've seen a bit. We've done all right. We've been to an island and um, we've seen quite a few lochs and mountains. Yeah. yeah. And you've got to save some for the next trip, haven't you, you know? Yeah, we definitely will be coming back. One thing I have to say about Scotland, which we complained about a lot of the time in England, is 4G reception. Oh my goodness. It's next level here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you've got reception. It's so good, isn't it? It's crazy. Like, yeah, they stick the antennas on top of the mountains and then it covers a huge distance. So you could be in a remote little park up somewhere in the middle of nowhere and you've still got 4G, really good reception. We haven't had any problems whatsoever with internet in Scotland. And then in England, I'm sure we moaned like pretty much in every vlog. Mm. You know, <laughs> we just couldn't do our work online. If we come back to Scotland, will we leave our bike and bring the sup boards? I'm actually looking down here as well, thinking that's lovely and shallow. I wonder how cold it is. Not for tonight, but maybe tomorrow we could have a little... If it's all right. Yeah. If the sun's out in the morning and it's, you know... the sun's out in the morning. <laughs> 20, you wake up to 20 degrees. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? You can't just keep kissing those dogs all day. You won't get anything done. Now, guys, question for you. If you had to, you had to choose. <gasps> what? If you had to choose one, because they were arguing, they were growling, they were barking, they were attacking each other, and we couldn't keep both of them, and you had to choose this one or this one. Yeah. Now, it's not going to happen, but if you had to choose either Dizzy or Charlie as your little dog, it's not going to happen. But if you had to, which one would you choose? Answers in the comments. That's Charlie Brown, the little honey bear, or little black pudding over there. Little black pudding. Oh, oh. oh, oh don't get jealous. Anyway, oh. anyway. Hey, let me, let me, let me kiss Dizzy. <laughs> See, this is where it starts, isn't it? This is where it starts. <laughs> starts with a bit of jealousy over a kiss. Um, 
Anyway, we slept lovely in this location and um, we've just had a really lazy day. Lazy morning. It's about two o'clock now. Oh, did you just hear the... Someone else do? Someone's just locked us have, in. Have you got the keys? Oh yeah, it's in my pocket. Oh, you just leaned against Maybe. her? I just heard the thorp go. On anyway. A... Anyway. Have you have got morning. the keys? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, we've had a really lazy morning. We haven't really done much at all apart from use the bathrooms here and um, be on our laptops. Nick's been gaming. He's actually been playing computer games and using all of our power. Uh, yeah, we've also been finishing off the video ready for YouTube and just been generally cuddling and kissing our dogs and just relaxing. Takes it's a lot of our time that does, doesn't it? It's actually been a really nice morning and yeah kissing the dogs probably takes about 75 to 80 percent of our time would you say? Yeah. I have to say though this is such a good spot and I, th I like how that you are legally allowed to just camp here right on the shores of the lock. There's like two designated areas down there on nice grass overlooking the lock and you can actually camp in a tent right on the beach and then you've got the toilets here as I said before with the hot water, bins, benches. Yeah, it's brilliant isn't it? It really is and then yeah this time of year it's completely free. You don't need a permit between October and March is it? March and September, yeah. And it's yeah. still pretty mild. Like today is about 12 degrees or something like that. It was 14 yesterday. So it's not bad. You've got the right clothes. Because as the saying goes, it's not bad weather. It's bad clothes, isn't it? Charlie, you can't cheat. So you cheat. need the right clothes, the right equipment, and you'd be well away. Personally, I wouldn't want to be in a tent. No. I'm quite happy in the van with the Webasto heater on, kissing my dogs. <laughs> but, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, tent camping, it's great. Lovely. You view down the locks, take, go out on your sup board, catch your own fish, yeah. come back, cook here, a little fire on the beach. Yeah. Perfect. Anyway, anyway, we're going to continue south now. We're going to continue along the lock. I think it's still quite a, a long way because this is the biggest lock in Scotland. This is. We drove about an hour and we got a tyre like a third of the way down. So yeah. it's probably a couple of hours. So we're just going, going to enjoy speed. the views and, and see where we end up. Oh, that is perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And we've just driven past the little village of Luss, coming down this lovely little road. Yellow lines, double yellows, either side, not many parking spaces. It's this spot for four vans or four vehicles, and we took the last spot, car just pulling away. Amazing. And just you look out to lock now, and there's loads of little islands, little forested islands, which look really cool. So we really wanted to park up here and send the drone up and have a little look-see. Meant to be, wasn't it? Meant to be, my love. Put it there. And this is only about, oh, we've only driven about, about 10 few, minutes. A few kilometres, yeah. literally, from where we were parked up. Very scenic little village which we've driven through. We're not going to be going back, but we'll have a little look around here. Make some food, I think, darling. Oh, yeah. Oh, something smells nice. Right, this today. <laughs> <laughs> look at this bread look how thin it is it's ridiculous so i've done three pieces for your sandwich so you put one bread oh like a big mac yeah double layered and then you put a little layer of smoked tofu yeah mm. and then you put a nice egg oh you're following this guys and then you put another layer of toast Ooh. and another layer of smoked tofu wow and then you put an egg on top Where's yours, darling? Well, this I don't. I've just had a bit of toast. Darling, don't be stupid. Well, I might have a bite, but you know, I did have some cereals, so I'm not that hungry. I've got myself a few little pieces of smoked tofu. I might just have this. oh, a few lonely pieces. I might there. have that and just an egg. Oh no, I've got one bread actually. I'll have that one last slice. One last slice. There you go. Selfless, this one. Selfless. So, do you want any? I was going to say it might be nice with ketchup. Smoked tofu is quite a strong flavour. We so got ketchup. 
No. Oh. Fresh tomato, if you like, slices. Have we got any garlic powder? No. Oh. We've got no garlic in this van, as I said last night. But I reckon that would be quite nice. Oh, gosh, you know how you can eat it, though. Look at that. Oh, look at that, guys. Perfectly cooked eggs. Sarah just tried to bite off camera so she didn't, you know, get filmed making a mess. Mmm. <laughs> I love smoked tofu. Nice though, isn't it? The soft bread, soft egg, crispy tofu. Perfect. Mm. Nice little spot, this one, isn't it? And I reckon if you were going to go sup boarding anywhere on Loch Lomond, this would be the place to go because there's lots of little islands and you could go around and go off exploring a there's bit, couldn't you? Little beaches, loads of yeah, little islands. It's I think this would be the really place cool. to be. So we'll mark this one down for when we bring this up board up. And it's calm as well. The water is like dead calm and silky. It'll be perfect to be sheltered from the wind generally in most directions. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we so, go. Yeah. Onwards to the next destination. Where's that, Diz? Where's the next destination, Dizzy? Yep, it is that way. Yep. That way. Good morning guys and you join us in Baloch. Baloch which is a little town on the southern end of Loch Lomond. It's been a peaceful night here. I've been in a little car park just across from co-op so we've got clean toilets there. A couple of vans here last night. Car park's filled up now and we're ready to leave. We're ready to leave not just here. <laughs> we're ready to leave the UK guys like we've just been discussing it this morning. We're getting cold and we're getting a bit missing the blue skies and the sunshine aren't we? Yes the epicness of Scotland has taken our mind off the fact that we haven't seen the sun for weeks or feels like forever. I don't think it's been weeks. We've seen blue bits of blue sky but not the yellow thing. Yeah and we don't want to moan about the weather. We don't want to moan at all. You know we get judged when we moan quite a lot. I mean, judge when we do anything. <laughs> yeah, judge. That's, that's just get judged. Sharing your life online, everyone's just watching and judging. So we don't want to moan, and we're trying not to moan, but we really do miss the sunshine. Dizzy's not happy. He's, do you know what? He's been the biggest moaner out of the lot. He's just <laughs> done nothing but moan just the whole cries, time. Just cries, cries, cries. <laughs> So we're going to hit the road and we're heading to Edinburgh. Might just run to co-op for one more quick pee. Nice clean toilets go up. Nice clean toilets. And we have done some grocery shopping there. We have done. We have bought a few things. Yeah. We buy things everywhere we go. We, can't, Fuel, we don't food. just Yeah, we don't just walk in and use a lose and walk out. I mean we, we every time we're like, what do we need? We've got everything and then we need to go for a pee. Well we need to get something at least. So every time you go there you're sort of just getting random stuff you don't need just so you can use a loo. Good morning. Good morning. From Edinburgh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Edinburgh. Let's not damage the van anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so typical. Today's completely clear, like sunshine. Like <laughs> we haven't had any sun for ages and ages. I suppose because we've left the highlands, the weather's yeah. always going to be a little bit better. Literally the here. best weather we've had. Anyway, why are we in Edinburgh, darling? Are we going to say now or are we going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we won. We wanted to. We wanted to see the city. Obviously, we skipped past it on the way out because we'd already visited a few cities, and we just wanted to get up to the Highlands and mm. explore up there. Um, but we did want to come to Edinburgh, and as it happens, we're here. So, one to explore the city, but most importantly, to get Velton our van sorted, yes. fixed. Yes, and that's what's happening. And yeah, before it was always before we actually went home and did the long drive back down to Spain and Portugal. We always wanted to like make sure the van was good and give it a service and now fix the broken passenger door and all of that because since we've had the van we've never actually given it a good service and obviously mm. we rushed up here so we want to do all of those things and that's why we're here in Edinburgh. 
We'll tell you more next week, though. Yes. We're at a lovely little campsite full of bunnies and squirrels, so the dogs are absolutely <laughs> loving it. I've never seen Edinburgh. Nick has been on a city break before haven't you to a festival a little music festival so we probably so we probably didn't see much of the city so it will be cool to explore and and yeah so yeah thanks for watching guys make sure you're subscribed hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video follow us on all our socials for daily updates goodbye dizzy and charlie goodbye everyone see you next week everyone and we'll see you all next week take care guys see you next thursday this is how cute you can be if you use nivea (laughs) This video is not sponsored by Nivea Cream. That looked like a right advert, didn't it? Placed perfectly there. It's not sponsored by Nivea. But get in touch, Nivea, if you would like us to do a sponsor video for you.